want to look at Luke's Great Commission. The Great Commission according to Luke. This is found in the book of Luke, chapter 24. And I'm going to read from verse 36. A little bit of reading and then preaching or teaching. Amen. If you don't know much about the Bible, Luke was a medical doctor. Yeah, Jesus was also uh, connected to some people that had education. He, he worked with fishermen as well as with tax collectors. And this man, Luke, worked a lot with the, the early church and the apostles. He himself was not an apostle or a disciple. But he was a man for the early church and worked with Apostle Paul. That's some biblical studies for all of you. He wrote two books in the Bible. It's called the Book of Luke, the Gospel of St. Luke, and then also the Acts of the Apostles. So he tells the story of Jesus, and then he tells the story of what happened after Jesus left. And at the end of his Gospel, he tells us, after the resurrection, Jesus Christ appeared to the disciples while they were uh, in Jerusalem. Let's put it in the NLT. Maybe it is nice. Luke 24, 36. And just as they were telling about it, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them. Peace! Be with you, he said. But the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened, he asked. Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. Touch me. And make sure that I am not a ghost. Because ghosts don't have bodies as you see that I do. As he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. Still they stood there in disbelief. Filled with joy and wonder. Then he asked them, do you have anything for me to eat here? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he ate it as they watched. Then he said, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations. Beginning in Jerusalem, there is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. And the last verse, and now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Amen. In the King James, please give it to me one more time. Luke 24 verse 36. I want to show you this is his last words as he appeared to them. In Jerusalem, they, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said to them, it is written, Christ must suffer and rise again on the third day. And that repentance, and here's the commandment, repentance and the commission that he gave them is that repentance and remission of sins should be preached. Hallelujah. He told them what must be preached. Amen. 
Why am I preaching what I'm preaching? Because Jesus told me what to preach. Hallelujah. I actually want to teach you so many things today because I see the needs that you have. I, I think we all need a good teaching on finances because many of us need more finances, including me. Amen. I, I want to teach you on uh, some other important health issues because many of you also need some teaching in health. Some of you are overweight. Uh, some are underweight and some are overweight. I, I, I want to teach you about how to invest your monies and how to rear your children. But I also want to, first of all, pay attention to the instruction of my Lord and Savior, who taught me to preach repentance. Hallelujah. And then to teach about the forgiveness of sins. Hey! These are the things I have to do because the last words are important words. He says, and repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among the nations, all the nations, beginning at home first, Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And then I will send you, hallelujah, the promise of the Father. Stay in Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. May the Lord bless the reading and the teaching of his word. Amen. The last commandment or the last commission is a great commission. And Jesus appears here to the disciples and they thought he was a ghost. When somebody comes back from the dead, of course you will think he's a ghost, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a marvelous how people are afraid of dead bodies. One day, Leon Suster, who, who knows Leon Suster? He took a dead body in a, it was a, it was a joke, the man wasn't dead, but they made her as he was dead. And uh, he asked the taxi if they can't help him to take this body to Worcester. <laughs> Surprisingly, the people in the taxi didn't want them to load in this dead body this coffin into the, uh, into the taxi, and they all jumped out of the door, some jumped out of the windows, and they said, no, 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 no. They are not sitting where there's a dead body. So you can understand the fear of the disciples when here somebody appeared that they saw die. They saw him die on the cross, and suddenly he's now here. And he's trying to calm their fears and to tell them, don't, I'm not a ghost. Look, my hands, my feet, the nail prints and the evidence of my crucifixion is here. You can put your finger here and you can see there's a, and then I'm also, I'm also asking for food. Because ghosts don't eat. Hey. Hallelujah. Now, just a few points on Luke's commission. The first thing we notice is that the commission is a commission to open the understanding of people. Because the Bible says in verse 40, uh, 45, he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, before you can receive the commission, you must understand the scriptures. Now, you might say, Pastor, but the Bible is available for all of us. Yes, it is. Many, many years ago, before there was a Protestant church, there was the Roman Catholic church. That was the only church around because Rome was a powerful nation and they backed the church in the Roman days. So the priest alone read the Bible and the people never read the Bible. So they came up with many um, man-made ideas and traditions. And then they came up with this idea that you can pay your way to go to heaven. And the church made a lot of money. 
by you, I think it's called indulgence, in, in, indulgences, right? You pay your way, and then if somebody dies, if somebody dies of your family, the person is lying in a place called purgatory. So you can pay the priest, and they will make some prayers and remove the person from purgatory into heaven. Purgatory was like a waiting, a waiting room. And depending how much sins your family member committed, it, 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 it determined how much our fathers, you would say, and how much Hail Marys. It's in the history books. What I'm saying to you today is in the history books. It was when a priest called Martin Luther, a Catholic priest, when he was asked to help to teach in the Bible school because he was a very controversial person, he read the, the books and he read the epistles of Paul and then he discovered but what the priests are telling us is not correct. Salvation is by grace alone. Just have faith in Jesus Christ. Say the confession of faith and you will be saved. Hallelujah. Because I think they were, they were making money by means, many means. One of it was that there was a staircase in uh, Germany, in one of the big cathedrals. If you go to Europe, you'll see massive cathedrals. Very big. We call this a cathedral, but I mean, those cathedrals of ancient, designed, beautiful monuments with tainted glass. When I was in Oxford, I saw some of these cathedrals many years ago, Oxford in England. I was impressed very impressed and I, I could see the carvings how they've really worked hard to make it look beautiful I think it was it in Atlanta we were was it in New York New York City uh, I was there I'm sorry to say all these things it's not like I'm <laughs> you'll be there too by faith we, were, we went into a, was another Roman Catholic Beautiful church, the tourists could come there and the, the, cravings were, the carvings were so beautiful. But there was, in this German, uh, in Cologne, they had this staircase, like just a few steps. And then you pay money to stand on the steps. And when you stand on the steps, then your sins are forgiven. And these steps, they say, was the steps they took from Jerusalem. It was the steps on which Pontius Pilate gave the commission to crucify him. Yeah, he, where Pontius Pilate stood and passed judgment on Jesus. Then there was another thing called the, the tooth of the lion. You pay, then you can have the tooth of the lion that was in Daniel's, the lion's den of Daniel. And by keeping the tooth in your hand, you will also then have forgiveness of sins. Hey! Then they gave you some milk. Just a droplet of milk. They say this milk came from the breast of the Virgin Mary. You can read it if you think I'm making stories. It's true. These were all the type of things that the church could tell the people. Why? Because the people did not read the scriptures. And so they did not know what was the truth. Are you with me? But by, by Martin Luther and uh, the Reformation... The Protestant Reformation, we came now to understand that the lay people, the ordinary people can also read the Bible. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something about the Bible. It's not like we think in the sense that if it's there to read, then we can all understand it. If it was clear to understand, why did Jesus then have to explain the scriptures to his disciples? And the Bible says he opened the understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And maybe that's why you come to sit here on a Sunday morning, because I'm sure you have a Bible or some replica of a Bible somewhere, either on your phone, your iPad, your chipad, or you have a real Bible or your grandmother's Bible that you have in your house. If you don't have a Bible, I feel very sorry for you, because it's the greatest book that you can ever read. It's the best book to read. It is the Bible. Hallelujah. However, there's some understandings that you need 
to get explained to you. Are you with me? Who remembers the Ethiopian eunuch while he was riding in his, in his chariot? He read something in the book of Isaiah that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. He asked Philip the evangelist, of who is the prophet speaking? Is he speaking of himself or someone else? And then the Bible in Acts says, and Philip the evangelist explained to the Ethiopian eunuch that, the, that Isaiah was not talking about himself. He was talking about Jesus Christ that would come many years later. So it is in the Bible, but the understanding is close. Hallelujah. Let me come closer to you. Because I need to say a few things. You know, in Revelation, the Bible says, they were looking for somebody to open the scrolls, the seals of the scrolls. And they said no one was found worthy. And then the Bible says someone like the Son of Man, a lamb. This is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth. He came and, 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 and the elders bowed down and they said he is worthy to open the scrolls, you see. And when he opens the seals of the scrolls, then there's a level of understanding that we get from the scriptures. Hallelujah. In, in Afrikaans, we used to sing this in the Pentecostal church. Wie is waardig om die boek te neem? En sy seels oop te maak. Want hy het ons met sy bloed gekoop. Elke nasie, tong en taal. It's an old chorus we used to sing it. I don't know if there's an English version for it. But it says, who is worthy to open the scrolls? The Lamb of God who, who, who bought us with his precious blood. And you see, the reason why many people could be confused in the church is specifically because of this lack of understanding. You have the same Bible as I do, the same version as I do, but you believe different as I do. Why? It's your understanding. Maybe your understanding has never been opened or enlightened. So if I teach you about faithfulness in the Bible, then you say, what is the? You see, you have not been made to understand certain things. Because when it's in the Bible, it's in the Bible. Hallelujah. Now you can easily say, Ek geloof net wat staan in die Bible. Ek praat gewoon met een paar pungste mense wat hier, ek is ook een pungste, ek is hier nog maar een pungste van julle allemaal. Ons geloof net wat in die Bible staan. Listen my brother and my sister, out of love, there's a lot of revelation that you need to receive from the word of God. If you are humble, God will open the books to you will open the Bible to you. But if you, if you come with a, a sense of, this is how it must be. You, you, you think the Bible is a, is a, is a oppervlakkige book? It's a very deep book with deep revelations. That's why Jesus had to open the book and explain to them, this thing that Moses wrote, he wrote about me. And they didn't understand. They were Jewish boys. But they didn't understand what Moses was writing, was writing about Christ. So if we teach and we preach the Bible and we use simile, metaphor, analogies, all these wonderful poetic writings, then you, have a, you might have a problem. It's because of your lack of understanding. Are you listening to me? Now, how do we deal with this problem of the lack of understanding? Who can it get feel for daily? Because in other words, my pastor, I glue so. That's your problem, me. I glue so, they glue so. But now we're also saying, what brings your glue for you, and what brings my glue for me? Are you with me? Look in 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 the areas and the people I. Walk Let's look at prosperity. 
The Bible is full of prosperity. And the Bible is explaining that God wants you to prosper too. And all the men of God in the Bible were prosperous. But you get a school of thought on believers who believe, hey, you must never talk about prosperity. And the church must remain poor. They even says the mouse in the church is poorer than the mouse in the Shabin. So they made a, a, a saying, so Arams is a kerk mice, as poor as a church mouse. Because the mouse don't get any food in the church because there's no food and there's no money there. And as soon as the church looks a little bit glamorous and a little bit prosperous, then you've got a lot of believers who say, and because I'm not going to make a subject of it today, but there's a lot of understanding that we need. The only way it will be revealed to us if we humble ourselves and say, teach us. Yes, there's false teachings. We all know that. That's why it's good to be balanced in the word. Amen? Be balanced in the word and also, as Paul said to Timothy, see where you learn these things from. You know my way of life. You know what I've been through. So it's not just important what you learn, it's where you learn it from. Yeah. Because you see today, in the time of social media, you can just go on YouTube and some pastor that you don't know from Hong Kong in Singapore, he can say something, say, Hi, he did no divide. Where did you learn it from? That's why it's important that all of you find a local church like this one, a good one. Find a pastor that you know, that you trust, that you can see. Uh -huh. Somebody that also has interest in you, that can guide you and teach you and open to you the understanding of the scriptures. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes you'll be surprised by the people you listen to. If you don't know their background and you don't know their history, you'll be surprised. The devil is out deceiving so many Christians. Hmm? I was talking the other day to some of my uh, leaders and I said, some of your family members, they, they, they don't agree with anything you believe and they always want to explain to you from the scriptures why they think what they believe is correct. And later they'll also tell you, I should have been a pastor, but I don't want to be a pastor. When people talk like that, they have a lot of pride in themselves. Are you listening? But they don't have a lot of understanding. A lot of pride, but a little understanding. So, the church becomes important. Well, the church becomes important because it's the place where the seals are open. The books are open. And understanding comes to the believers. Hallelujah. Don't follow anybody who tells you it's not important to go to a church. Don't follow anybody who tries to diminish and to break down the church. The church is the bride of Jesus Christ. The church is very important. The church is a gathering place where believers come to sit and hear the understanding of the word of God. Where the seals are open. And revelation knowledge flows to all of us. Glory to God. They were with Jesus, but they didn't know it was him who Moses wrote about. So we had to open the understanding from the book of Genesis right through to the book of Malachi. To explain to them everything written in the prophecies me. It's about me. Glory to God. One day a young man he came and argued with me about the Bible. And I realized he has what we call the letter of the word. But not the spirit. 
you see. So, for example, they take everything in a literal sense. You see. So, you know, when, when Ezekiel saw the water, he stepped into the water. It was just water. But God was referring to the levels of the spirit. But depending on you. Look, I went to Bible school. I actually went to university. So I know different types of interpretation. We, we, we have big names for it which I don't want to use. But you can do a, a literal interpretation. Then you can do a metaphysical interpretation. Then you can do these different types of interpretations of the Bible. Are you with me? Call no man your father. Matthew 23 talks about call no man your father. Call no man your teacher. Call no man. But you see, so they say, oh, when they say, when you refer to Pastor Chris as our father, then it's, it's not correct. You have a lack of understanding. Because if it's correct, you mustn't call your teacher your teacher. Call a ma'am or umpi. Umpi or ma'am. Is it right? Yeah. Then all other things where the word father is used, you can't use it. If, if it's correct. You see, it's a lack of what? Understanding. And I believe Satan is so successful. This is one of the things where he really breaks down people from going further in the Lord. This intermix of doctrines and this and that. And look, your life is a result of your belief. Yeah. How you are living and your fruit of your life will say if your belief is a good belief. Are you listening? Wisdom is justified by her children. Wisdom is justified by her children. So may you have an, a humble heart like the heart of a child that's willing to learn and willing to receive. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm fully aware that some people just also come to here. Let me check this pastor's doctrine out. I don't have a problem with you, my brother, at all. I know what I have believed. And I know where I believed it from. And I've seen the results of my belief. I, I've seen my faith in Jesus Christ. You see, when you hear testimony like the girl who testified now, then it makes my heart so glad that something good is happening. Some lives are being changed. You can get a lot of talkers, but there's no fruit. Let you, don't be a, a talker with no fruit. Rather be, but rather be a doer of the word and show the fruit of the gospel. Glory to God. A fro muni priyakshona a dukwa akopni. No muni, no fry for his sister, but go for me. That's your sister. Why I can't even put it? I put all these secrets on my corpse. One day I was in a, I was in a house where uh, my father asked the lady to pray for us, but there was no duke around. But there was a klitsi. Do you know what a klitsi? A klitsi is the thing you put on the, a doily, a doily. A doily. You put it on the TV. Yeah, you put it on the TV and on the cupboard. And then the sister took the doily. But the problem was, there were two sisters in the room. 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 Hey! Van die skrifse! Afro moet nie bad as haar hoof nie bedek as nie. So they criticize if you walk with a pencil, you know. 
And God bless their hearts because it's out of innocence, maybe. I'm not criticizing. Out of innocence, out of ignorance. But the authority the Bible talks about is, 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 is spiritual authority. Not the authority from a klitschi or a duki. It's spiritual authority. A woman shall not prophesy without authority over it. She must have some authority. Are you listening? The lack of understanding. So we have much to learn. But if we say no, we know it all. We are in dangerous ground. I mean, who else than the disciples to say, we've been with Jesus three years. Now we have to open the understanding after three years of walking with him. They read Matthew, they read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. They read all these books, but they had no under. May you receive understanding of the scriptures in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Hey. Number two, the great commission of Luke is a commission not just to open understanding, but also to preach repentance. Glory to God. Amen. To preach repentance. What does repentance mean? Repentance of sins means to turn away from sin. So Jesus said, when you go to preach, preach about repentance. Tell the people to turn away from sin. Amen. So this great commission includes the naming of sins and wickedness of human beings so that they can turn away from sin. But in the world we live in today, preachers do not mention sins much in the church because they are afraid they will offend people. Sins like fornication, lying, stealing, homosexuality is not mentioned. If you mention homosexuality as a sin in the church today, they call it hate speech. Is it true? And because we don't preach about sin anymore, the church is now filled with unrepentant and unchanged religious sinners. But in the last words of Jesus to the church, he mentioned the topic of repentance. And we have to take note of the last words of Jesus. We cannot ignore it and become these wonderful, self-dignified preachers. Preachers of white lies. Try to be polite. And I have told you so many times, I'm, I'm trying my best to be polite. I'm sure even after my first few minutes here, some people might think I'm not polite. So I want to be polite and prevent people from being upset. Oh, yes. But the problem is, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus did not call me to be polite. He told me to preach repentance. He's commissioned me, hallelujah, to preach repentance, not to prevent people from becoming upset. So that I don't stop preaching because I might offend people. Hmm? You know, of all the problems I've had in this church, I've had to start to talk about the issues of life. And I always feel sometimes I'm too, the English word is uncouth. It's almost like uncivilized. Don't mention these things so openly, Pastor. These are all holy people, Pastor. These people don't have sexual problems, Pastor. They are all virgins, Pastor. 
a young girl said this. And these married women, they only stay faithful to their husband's pastor. But it's not true. Repentance is to turn from your sin. Are you listening? You can't continue sinning and call yourself a Christian. We have to stop your sexual immorality. Are you hearing me? What does it mean for the local people? Say, mon opo sex it. As in ikat trotesi. Kijk hoe stil raak jylle. Sien jylle? Jylle hou nie van die goed wat ek praat. Sy moet op jou lig. Jou lig bek is hier mooi in die kek te sê nie. You see, offending people. So you want to be nice because you are afraid people might leave. I want to... You know, every pastor likes a lot of people in his church. Don't, don't, don't be fooled by the small churches who say they don't want a lot of people. They just can't get a lot of people. They would also like. So you are afraid now if you say these things outrightly, you see, will the people come back? But Jesus told us, preach repentance. What does it mean? Turn around. Turn back from what you are doing. You can't continue lying. You can't continue stealing. You can't continue your illicit sex. You can't continue fornication. And you must stop your adultery. And if you say, Pastor, how can I stop? I must also preach that there's forgiveness of sins to the cross of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I, I, the commission doesn't just tell me to go and preach. It tells me what to preach. What must I preach? That you must stop your sin. Amen. And you can look righteous, but I know you. We all have sinned, the Bible says. All have sinned. Romans 3 verse 23. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Actually, Romans 3 10 says, There is none righteous, no, not one. None righteous. No. I am the worst of sinners. As I stand before you, brother, me too. I am the worst of sinners. Hallelujah. I didn't have enough power to rescue me from my sin. Are you hearing me? Because lies are natural. Stealing is natural. It is the human nature. It's close to devil nature. Oh yes. Lying, stealing, fighting. So what can help us and what can save us? Let me tell you about the forgiveness of sins. There is no repentance without the forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. And it's the story of the cross of Jesus. Now to the church it might look foolish. Pastor gaat hier alweer praat van die kruis en die bloed. This is the power of the, of the gospel message. Hallelujah. Not about bonds and stocks and financial prosperity, which is also important, but the most important thing is that Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth to die for you and for me. That's the message. That's the message. And he died on a cross. Roman crucifixion was the way of torture and the way of death. The way of humiliating the people so that they could be afraid of the Roman power. Jesus was accused falsely of being a thief and of being someone that wanted to, to speak against the Jewish religion. And he was crucified. But you see the, the Bible, the understanding was written when the apostles thought this was just some mistake, mistaken death. Jesus had to take them back to the Old Testament and say, no, look, it is already written in Isaiah. He will be wounded for my transgressions. He will be bruised. He will be beaten. He will be bruised for my iniquities. It's already written. I'm opening your understanding. The chastisement of our peace shall be upon him. And by his stripes, 
the stripes on his back. You can be healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some preacher said, I don't preach about the blood and the cross. It's too gruesome for people. People need money. People need business. They need to be, they need jobs. They need to be strong economically. And the pastors who speak against the blood and the cross, their ministries die quickly. And they will become nothing in a no time. Because you see the mysteriousness of the blood and the cross. It might be a mystery. But it's the greatest message you can ever preach. On a hill. Far away. <laughs> there was an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. If it wasn't for that cross. We would not stand here today. The cross is an emblem of shame. And suffering. That is the suffering that my Jesus had to go through for you and for me. And even if you were the only person alive on this earth, you would still come from heaven to die in your stead. Because he gave his life as a ransom for many. Oh yes. Some foolish preacher said, stop talking about hiding behind the cross. We must sing songs of victory. When I was a young boy, I'll never forget. I had a vision of the cross. And when I wanted to explain it to some people, I started to cry. Because it was like I was there at the foot of the cross. And the one brother took me one side. He said, you mustn't cry about the cross. It's something long ago. He said, we are victorious now in Christ Jesus. And that brother didn't live to see 50 years old. Because I had a vision of Jesus on the cross. And this vision will never leave me. The blood came streaming down. He told his disciples, take this message. There is no salvation without the forgiveness of sins. That because of the blood, your sins are washed away. You say, yes, pastor, I'm, I, 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 have, I have sexual sin. Pastor, I am a liar. Pastor, I stole. Pastor, I have addictions. Pastor, I can't get rid of the alcohol. Pastor, I can't get rid of the, the cigarettes. Let me tell you, the blood of Jesus Christ will wash all your sins away. Blood, how pastor, how can blood? You see, the life of the flesh is in the blood. In Leviticus, in Leviticus, the first books, he said the life of the flesh is in the blood. So when Jesus gave his blood, he gave his life. He gave his life. Jesus said, when you, when you, when you come together, you must always break the bread. And you must drink the cup. Why? Don't forget my death on the cross. Don't forget. Don't start preaching of economics, psychology, and history. It's not the message of the church. This is my commandment to you in Luke chapter 24. Go and preach repentance and the forgiveness of sins. I will cherish that old rugged cross. I will cherish that old rugged cross. Maybe nobody ever told you about the cross. I tell you today, my friend, there was a hill called Golgotha. They took Jesus out of the city to be crucified on a hill. They accused him of sedition and treason. But he was innocent. Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Why do you want to crucify him? And the Jews shout, crucify him. Crucify him. 
And the Bible says he hung between the sky and the earth and the blood from his hands and his nails and his forehead, he came streaming down. Streaming down the cross so that it can wash all your sins away. You don't have to go to hell. God sent a savior. His name is Jesus. He came to die for you so that you can have forgiveness of sins. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. Romans 6, verse 23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Preach it, he said. Preach it. Repentance. Turn around. Now you might say, Pastor, I don't have power to change. I know you don't have power. That is why the Bible says you shall receive power. The last part of, of the commission is that you will have Holy Ghost power. Hallelujah. Hey, and the thing that used to make you fall can't make you fall anymore. Glory to God. Yes. You shall preach it to all nations in the power of the Spirit. That, that is Luke 24. Pastor, who can I go to work? The Heilige Geest of you, Christ, hallelujah. Pastor, how will I stop my alcohol? You shall receive power. How can I turn from my sexual sin? The blood will cleanse you. And when temptation comes again, you shall have power. Is it your own power? No, brother. It's the power of the Spirit. Glory to God. And it takes a, a, a power to preach about the cross and the blood. And about Calvary, which is what I'm telling you about now, as I close. On Calvary's hill of sorrow, Jesus died so that you can have eternal life. In Revelation chapter 20, he says, the books will be opened one day. And the book of life will also be opened. If your name is not found written in the book of life, you're going to be cast into a lake of fire. But Jesus has come to save you. He's come to dive into the waters of sin to pull you out. You don't have to continue living the way you are living. If you are in sin, you must turn around. God is calling you from a life of wasted years. And it's at the cross, at the cross, where your eyes will open. And you will see the light. Maybe some of you here, you are visiting here and you say, you don't understand all this. I don't, I don't, I don't blame you. Your understanding must still be open. I don't understand why people can go on about an event that happened 2,000 years ago. If the Holy Spirit will open your eyes to see. And it was at that precious cross that my sins are washed away. When the devil comes to accuse me, then the blood is held up like this, and the blood speaks on my behalf. I am free, and I am clean from all the sins of the past. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Then the master of the seas, he heard my cry. He jumped into the water. Christ, my Savior, he rescued me. Now safe am I. And today he's throwing out the lifeline to you too. You can be saved. You can be rescued. I'm preaching what Jesus instructed me in Luke 24. Turn, my sister, turn. Why do you want to keep going in that direction? You can come back. Turn around. Turn around. He's calling you. He's calling you. 
And then you will have this Holy Ghost anointing. Oh, you will have it. You see, let me say this in closing. You, if you keep falling, I, you gave your life to Jesus, but you keep falling. When Christmas comes, you can't say no to beer. You can't say no to cigarettes. You can't say no to friends. You need to, to meet Jesus at the cross. It mustn't just be a story that I'm telling you. You must come to the cross. If you stand at the bottom of that cross and you see him hung for you, I tell you the things of the world is, is, not, is not nice anymore. All you want is to be at the foot of the cross. All you want is Jesus. All you ever need is Jesus. And all that you want is Jesus. And the other things in life will be added unto you. Bow your heads, please. Bow your heads. I want to pray for some people this morning. The gospel is preached to you to this morning that you must turn from your wicked ways. Repent from your sins. And if you say, Pastor, how? I want to tell you the blood will wash you away all your mistakes and all your sins. And you will become a new person in Christ Jesus. Will I remain standing? Oh, yes, you will. By the power of the Spirit. By the power of the Spirit. If you are here and you say, Pastor, pray for me. Please, I want to be part of that prayer. Put up your right hand, I will pray for you. I see your hand. Is there somebody else? I see your hand. Yes, we're going to pray for you. This is the most important message. The most, everybody stand. The whole church is standing, please. The whole church is standing. The whole church is standing. Can I be honest with you, people of Breakthrough? I was working on preaching to you some scriptures that could help you in many other areas. But then the Holy Spirit said, preach what Jesus commanded you to preach. Repentance and forgiveness of sin. Oh, I love that old cross. Where the dearest and the best for this world of lost sinners was slain. All those who put up their hands, I want you to step out of your seat and come to join me here on the blue carpet. I'm going to say the sinner's prayer with you. I'm going to pray for you. Your life will never be the same again. Don't be ashamed. Please step out of your seat. Come to the front. in the valley of this season. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says if you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. I want to pray the sinner's prayer. It's the greatest prayer that you can ever pray. 
is the prayer that will take you from where you are to the next level in Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't have to die in your sin. Jesus died for you already. Now you accept the free gift of eternal life. The free gift of eternal life. And you become a new person by the power of the Holy Ghost. You come to church every Sunday to have understanding of the word. So that your understanding might be open. Pray this prayer after me and mean it with all your heart. You know the Bible says you must believe with your heart. And you must confess with your mouth. That God raised Jesus from the dead. They thought he was just an ordinary man that was crucified. They did not know he was the Son of God. Who came to die for the sins of many. Including you. And on the third day. Hallelujah. The tomb was empty. He appeared to his disciples. He said, don't be afraid. See my hands. See my feet. I've come to pay the price for the remission of sins. Go and tell the people that they can be changed by the blood of Jesus. Say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I come to you today, I come to you today just, as I am. just as I am. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I admit I admit I have many mistakes. I have many mistakes. I admit I admit I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please wash me. Please wash me. With your blood. With your blood. Your precious blood. Your precious blood. Make me new. Make me new. Give me a new heart. Give me a new heart. By the power. The power of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. Help me to stand. Help me to stand. And to follow you. And to follow from you. this day forward. From this day forward. I want to be your child. I want to be your child. Please come into my heart. Please come into my heart. Write my name. Write my name in the book of life. In the book of life. From this day onwards. From this day onwards. I want to follow you, Jesus. I want to follow you, Jesus. I want to serve you, Jesus. I want to serve you, Jesus. Please be my Lord. Please be my Lord. My master. My master. I turn my back. I turn my on back Satan. On Satan. I turn my back. I turn my on back. my old life. From today, from today, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. From today, from today, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I thank you for saving me now. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Let's clap for the Lord. A wonderful hand clap.